The year began with Europe on edge. A huge Russian build-up on the Ukrainian border led to worries of a full-scale war and a diplomatic scramble. Uh, they're even moving blood now and blood supplies to the border as well. So these are not good signals. Uh, and so while we should not give up on, uh, uh, on diplomacy, we shouldn't be naive either. The diplomacy fails and in late February, Vladimir Putin makes his move, pouring thousands of troops into Ukraine. The war is expected to be quick, but almost everyone underestimates Ukraine's resilience, pushing Russian troops away from Kyiv. What they find after the Russian retreat is chilling. I have seen mass graves. I have never seen so many dead bodies before. I have seen bodies of people with uh, hands tied behind their backs. Sometimes it was the families killed and sometimes for people who died alone. The war creates a mass movement of refugees across Europe and over the course of the year, more than 60,000 will arrive in Ireland alone, creating a huge logistical challenge for the government to find suitable accommodation. It also brings into question one of Ireland's longest standing global positions, its neutrality. I don't think we've ever been neutral at all. Um, yeah. Never an actual neutral country. We're just pretenders. Um, we're, we're neutral frauds, basically. We, we pretend to be neutral. But there, there's no question that Ukraine has been seen as a, as a potential pawn in this game. And, and honestly, it feels at the moment like NATO is enjoying this just a little bit too much. Fallout from the war also hits our pockets. The price of petrol, diesel and foods shoot up and inflation levels not seen in decades, in part due to the fighting. It led to calls throughout the year for the government to help. We are going to see families who won't be able to afford to actually drive to work very, very soon. If this goes, we're currently at two euros a litre in most, most of the country. One euro of that is government taxes. The cost of living crisis brought people onto the streets with pressure on the government to act. We do know that you're bringing in those um, once-off payments and that, but the reality is what people do need to see is that certainty. Those people are getting payments in the coming weeks. Everybody on a core weekly social welfare payment is getting a double week and is also getting the Christmas bonus, which is the second double week. The housing crisis didn't go away throughout the year and coupled with inflation led to prices for owners and renters continuing to rise and the government's housing for all plan coming under scrutiny. Do you think we're in a well, state of emergency when it comes I, to I housing? Think, I think what we've got, no, I don't. And why I say that to you is for many people it is an emergency. And I recognise that and I meet people every day of the week. I was with Peter McVerry Trust today. Uh, we're seeing really good work done on the ground. We have far too many people homeless. They're the first people I think about every morning when I get up as to how many people that we can exit from homelessness to permanent housing. Climate was never far away from the headlines, with the government's emissions targets in the spotlight, especially over how much the agriculture sector should be contributing. Turf became a burning topic during the summer, with plans to ban the sale of the fuel causing outrage in rural Ireland. In the last few days of the year, an historic swap over with Fianna Foyle's Michael Martin handing over the reins to Fine Gael's Leo Varadkar. So that's why I don't really factor in polling. And I, I just say this to you, I think if governments allow themselves to be dictated to and influenced by every a poll every month, you never have good government. This government has done well. In October, tragedy struck in County Donegal. Ten people were killed and multiple injured in an explosion at an apple green in Chrysla, sending the community and the country into a period of grief. Over the next few days, uh, locals will be supporting their friends, their family, their neighbours, and um, it's going to be a very, very difficult few days. During the summer, Dublin Airport sees total chaos, with people queuing for hours and missing flights. It didn't work quite right at the weekend. We're going to look at why that was the case. But our own army is capable of taking care of business this weekend. In November, Ireland lost an icon as campaigner and activist Vicky Phelan passed away. The last three years, she was uh, the most loyal, courageous, inspirational person uh, I think I have ever met.
In the UK, a monumental passing. Queen Elizabeth II dies after more than 70 years on the throne. The first and most appropriate thing is to express condolences to, to the family and, uh, and to people in Britain, but also to unionists here in Ireland because uh, uh, they're going to feel her passing in a way much more acutely than, than some of us may do personally. And I think it's really important we acknowledge that, we recognise that and we respect that. The funeral happens in the middle of a year of political chaos in the UK. It begins with Boris Johnson, who is hit with scandal after scandal. You do get the impression that if he ever does leave Downing Street, he will be holding on to the door handles and the door frames and someone will be trying to prise him off. It doesn't quite get as far as that, but eventually the scandals become too much for Boris Johnson. Enter Liz Truss, who wins a summer-long contest with Conservative members. 40 days later, exit Liz Truss, her premiership falling apart after a disastrous mini-budget that caused the pound to crash. Rishi Sunak replaces her, becoming the UK's third Prime Minister in as many months. In the United States, a seismic moment. Roe versus Wade, the Supreme Court's decision on abortion, is overturned. It leads to protests both on the streets and the ballot box, with Democrats using the issue to have a much better midterms than was expected. He may not be president, but Donald Trump was never far from the headlines. His Mar-a-Lago home raided by the FBI in the summer. By winter, he was back in familiar territory, announcing another run at the 2024 presidency. Elon Musk took over the social media giant. Twitter, his new term resulted in big changes to the site and layoffs around the world. If you're, you know, a police force and say there's an Amber Alert or something like that mm. trying to put out there, you know, if you have to pay for your blue tick, like, regardless of the economy, might say, well, we're not paying for a blue tick and that's fine. Or in places where you've got multiple police forces in a single state, which would be more uh, relevant in this case, someone can just basically say, oh, we're you. And it's very easy to make it look like they are that person and people get confused to, is this really a, a police yeah. issue, is it not? Like, the amount of theories I've had friends discussing with me over the course of the day alone from this, where there's so many ways in which this could turn into a dumpster fire, Claire, is yeah. just ridiculous.